Hi comic book fans, welcome to another suddenlycomics.com video. Um, as my cat just crosses the screen. Right, um, so I thought I, last night I uh, binge watched uh, the uh, Netflix Sandman series. I've only been waiting since uh, 1989, so what's that, 30 something years, uh, to see this on screen. Um, and I binge watched, I watched the first five episodes. I think that's what covered the first part of the Sandman Preludes and Nocturnes. Okay, to set up my credentials before I give my review, um, I am uh, a long-term fan of Neil Gaiman and indeed of the Sandman. So in 1989, when the Sandman number one comic first came out, uh, I was 30 years old. I was uh, between marriages. So I was single, had no kids. And um, I was in the comic buying phase. Uh, so when Sandman number one came out by Neil Gaiman, um, I bought it because uh, I like Neil Gaiman. I read it and I was hooked. And so I purchased all uh, of the Sandman as they came out uh, from my local comic shop. And I got all issues one to 75. It went on until I think it was 1996. It was about seven years of comics. I read every one as they came out. It's the only series I've ever done that with. Um, certainly over that length of uh, that length of uh, comic. So I'm a big fan of the comic. What did I think of the TV series? Was it thumbs down? or thumbs up. Okay, well first of all I'm going to tell you about the things that I liked. Okay, and there's quite a lot of them. So first of all, the major award has to go to the casting director. Okay, the casting here is fabulous. Okay, virtually every single character is perfect. Um, Death himself, Tom Sturridge, I just cannot imagine anybody else now playing Death. Um, jo um, the, uh, uh, Jenna Coleman as uh, Joanna Constantine, I thought pulled off Constantine uh, brilliantly. Even has, um, she even has a trench coat um, and uh, I thought she was tremendous, especially when she was um, dispelling demons. Um, I'm not going to give it too many plot spoilers, but uh, yes, yeah, so Jenna Coleman I thought was great. Um, Cain and Abel, brilliantly cast. My favourite, and this was a big surprise to me, my favourite was the actress playing Death. Now, Death in the comics it comes across as a sort of um, emo uh, punky girl. Um, that's not the character, that wasn't the character we saw here. What we saw here was, um, I thought, really well done. And as Gaiman explained it himself, his idea was that Death is always portrayed as something like the Grim Reaper, something to be feared. He wanted Death to be um, someone who was sympathetic, empathetic, so when you come to the end of your life, you've got somebody you can have a chat with. Um, and this was pulled off perfectly. Um, uh, also, the character that played uh, Hob Gedling, uh, the character who lives forever and the Sandman meets up with him once every hundred years, he was Mr. Everyman, which is exactly what he was meant to be. So, um, yeah, and finally, um, my favourite piece of casting probably was Gwendolyn Christie as Lucifer. Hugely powerful performance, absolutely loved her. Um, well, I want to see more of Gwendolyn Christie as Lucifer, um, and if we follow the uh, comics, we will see some more of Gwendolyn Christie. So, first off, casting director, brilliant job. Next up, the visuals. Uh, completely stunning. I'm glad we waited 30 something years to get this on the screen because we couldn't have done this 30 years ago to this level. The level of attention to detail in the visuals is quite frankly stunning. Um, the gates to the dreaming, the castle in the dreaming, um, the, the, um, the, 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 series, the uh, episode in which we see um, Hob Gedling, and we go through the ages from whatever it is, 1389 to 
1989, um, every 10 years, the costume changes. That episode in itself must have got handed in a complete wardrobe department. Um, the, uh, some of the animations are really good. I uh, really liked uh, Matthew the Crow. I really believed it was a crow. Um, and uh, the, uh, the gargoyles, um, Goldie the gargoyle is cute. Um, so, yeah, the visuals, incredible. Okay, next up, how does it follow the comic? Okay, right. Um, there are some significant changes. So there are some changes to the comic. Now, some of these I thought worked, and some of them I thought reduced the power of the story. So this is one of my area of criticism. Um, so for instance, uh, the Corinthian um, has a bigger role to play in the Netflix series than he does in the comics. So in the Netflix series, he's obviously being set up as a main protagonist. So he appears at the beginning, um, he appears throughout the series, throughout the first five episodes, trying to um, thwart the Sandman. That doesn't happen in the comics. So obviously they put this in to create the Corinthian as the main protagonist. Um, my jury's out on this. I'm going to wait and see what happens in the next five episodes. I'm only reviewing the first five episodes here. Um, as a plot device, it's reasonably okay. Um, so I can live with that. Um, obviously, we've got some of the character changes, John Constantine to Joanna Constantine. I was okay with that. Um, what I would say is they've really toned down the horror from a couple of the comics. So the um, issue in which Joanna Constantine goes and gets the sand from her ex-lover, um, that is much more horrific in the comics. Again, the whole walls are covered with human flesh uh, from, uh, from somebody who's overused the sand. Um, and also the... Um, the scene with Dr. D in the diner, which I thought was okay, um, was much less horrific than the comic, but I did see Neil Gaiman talking about this, saying that's the most horrific comic he's ever written, and he'd had to have a lot of thought about how they portrayed it and still got people coming back for the next episode. So I can understand that. Um, also, they cut a whole part out, um, which I thought was gonna be in there, uh, about how um, Sandman finds where his ruby is. So in the comics, he goes and sees some of the members of the Justice Society of America who captured Dr. D um, and held his, and put, took his ruby. Um, so we see John Johns, I think, and is it Mr. Miracle? I can't remember, um, but a couple of the characters, um, and I think that was cut out, and all that happened is when he got his mask back, he said, oh, now I know where the ruby is. Uh, I preferred the comic. I think they probably did it for timing. And in fact, I heard Neil Gaiman talking about this scene, so it must be sitting on the cutting room floor somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> um, so there we go. Um, what so overall uh what do i think oh, okay right i'm gonna have to cover this because my mate alan who i do the prize variance thing has got this big anti-woke um thing uh so i know and he's not gonna like this okay because virtually every relationship here is not heterosexual um virtually every character we see is either bisexual or homosexual um is it a bit overdone yeah I think it probably is a bit, and it's going to alienate some of the um, some of the people who are, uh, think that everything's been turned woke. Okay, so here that is my ten-minute review of the first five episodes of the Sandman. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. I'm glad we wasted this time. For me, the positives overcome those few negatives that I talked about, and I'm looking forward to the next five episodes, uh, especially the serial convention. Uh, so there we go. My 10-minute review of the first five uh, episodes of The Sandman now on Netflix. That's your lot. See you soon. <laughs>